You are now listening to The Forefront Radio, where we discuss history, the Bible, the history of the Israelites, science, and other matters. Bring it out. The history of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans as it relates to the Bible. Who were you prior to slavery? Who were you prior to colonization? These answers and more can be seen and heard as you listen to The Forefront Radio. The United States of America prides itself on being a nation of freedom, prosperity, peace, and democratic values. However, the United States has been a land of hypocrisy and mimics the oppression of ancient Rome. In this episode, we are going to discuss the similarities to ancient Rome and the Vatican, the amounts of deaths and genocide under the guise of spreading democracy. Grab your pens and take notes as we discuss the United States of America, the land of hypocrisy. All right, folks, welcome to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afia Levi. At this time, we're going to talk about America, the land of hypocrisy. We're going to go over a video briefly, and then we'll go into a presentation discussing how America is not the bastion of freedom. It's not the bastion of hope and prosperity of the world, but actually a land of hypocrisy. The United States military has about 750 bases overseas, across 80 countries and colonies. That means that about 4 out of every 10 countries have U.S. bases on them, across every continent except Antarctica. But having that many military bases abroad is normal, right? This is more foreign military bases than any country or people or empire in world history. In fact, So the United States of America has more military bases than any other place and any other empire in the world. Only about a dozen other countries even have foreign military bases, with just 70 combined between them. That means the US has the other 90%. So why is that? And what would the world look like if the US shut its overseas military bases down? Military bases as we know them today really began popping up during World War II, following the 1940 Destroyers for Bases deal between the US and the UK. Under this deal, the US gave Great Britain 50 World War I naval vessels, known as destroyers, in exchange for 99-year leases and pretty much sovereign power over eight British bases in the Western Hemisphere. So before and after World War II, the United States was already preparing to go into war. Notice how he said 1940, okay? Watch this. These included Jamaica, the Bahamas, and Trinidad. By 1945, the US was building about 112 foreign bases a month. In the span of only five years, the US grew the first empire of bases in the world. This empire of bases strategy hasn't changed since World War II. It was this moment that we see the United States become a, a new and, and unprecedented kind of empire. I'd like to pause it right there to show you that the United States of America is not a republic. It is not a democracy. It is an empire. Okay. You heard it straight out of the horse's mouth. Okay. So now what we're going to do, folks, we're going to go into sharing more information in this presentation discussing how the United States of America is the land of hypocrisy. So now let's go ahead and go to the presentation. The United States land of hypocrisy. America is an image of ancient Rome. America was built by the descendants of the children of Israel who were enslaved and brought under subjection and hard bondage, forced taxation, and religio-political oppression, just as the ancient Greco-Romans did in the past. We're going to go to 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died, and his servants 
bear rule, every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. And so did their sons after them many years. And evils and evils were multiplied in the earth. And there came out from them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the 137th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. So for those of you that are familiar with history, we know that America is the image of the Greco-Roman Empire. America is the exact replica of the Greco-Romans because that's their ancestors. That's who they come from. Okay. So now notice here, a lot of times when they talk about the West, right, they say that the, the Greeks and the Romans were the dawn of civilization. Now in the book called the Apocrypha, the Bible actually says when the Greeks and the Romans came to power, evils were multiplied on the earth. And we're going to discuss some of those evils today. Okay. Let's go to first Maccabees chapter one and verse 41. And it reads, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. What is this called today, folks? Assimilation, Hellenization, a new world order. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. So now notice this. In the formation of the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire, they had two things that they established. They established a political structure and they established a religious structure. Believe it or not, the same thing happens here in America. The major religion here is modern Christianity, not the Christianity of the Bible, but a new form of Christianity strictly opposed, diametrically opposed to the Bible and teaching European white supremacy. We're going to find this out as we further on in this study. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profane the Sabbath. So now notice this. The United States of America has vast amounts of gods and idols throughout the earth. The first main one is the white image of Caesar Borgia that we mistakenly claim is Jesus the Christ. When you read the Bible, you find out that the Hebrews of the Bible are actually people of black, brown, native indigenous descent. They are not from Scandinavia. They are not Edomite origin. They are not Norwegian. They are not Caucasian. The people of the Bible originated in Africa. A perfect example of this would be when you first read the first couple of chapters of the Bible. You read about the Garden of Eden, how the, there's rivers that reach into Mesopotamia as well as into Ethiopia. Where is Ethiopia? Africa. Okay. And this is just the Garden of Eden. Then you find that the children of Israel were scattered into Egypt. Where is Egypt? Africa. And then they left into Canaan, which was the land of Ham. Ham was the Africans. So now think about this. The children of Israel were compared to Mizraim, were compared to the Egyptians. What color are the Egyptians? Black. The children of Israel were also in the book of Amos compared to the children of the Ethiopians. What color are the Ethiopians? Black. So now a new religion came forth, that of the Greeks and Romans, where the Greco-Roman Empire imprisoned, entrapped, and enslaved the children of Israel, took their records and placed their own images and forced them into what we know as Hellenization, what we know as, as assimilation. Let's continue forward. It says, for the king sent letters by messengers into Jerusalem and to the cities of Judea, that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid 
offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and the festival days and pollute the sanctuary and the holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and swine's flesh and swine's flesh and eat unclean beasts. This is the same thing that happens now in modern Christianity where they have chapels or churches of idols throughout its places. You could go to places in, for example, one street in Alabama has about 10 churches within a, a two mile radius, back to back to back, every street corner full of chapels of idols, not teaching the people who they really are, but really teaching white supremacy. The Caucasian image of Caesar Borgia is the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome, who Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and other European Edomite descendants drew during the Renaissance these images of worship that we know of, of today. Let's continue forward. It says that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation to the end that they might forget the law and all the ordinances and whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. In the selfsame manner, wrote to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. So now this is the same thing where we see here in America, where we celebrate American holidays, where we celebrate American customs that come from ancient Rome. Easter, as far as bunny rabbits laying eggs, as far as Santa Claus, reindeer, all these things come from Roman pagan festivals, Greco-Roman pagan festivals of Saturnalia, that's your Christmas, Lupercalia, that's your, your February 14th, Valentine's Day, of celebrating Janus, that's your New Year's Day in the dead of winter, all these different months of the year named after Greco-Roman deities, all the days of the week named after Greco-Roman deities. There is nothing new under the sun. This America is a land of hypocrisy. They don't trust in the God of creation or the God of the Bible. Their gods are the gods of the Romans, their ancestors. That is who they push on the earth, land of hypocrisy. Now, the next text of scripture we're going to look at to prove this point that the Greco-Roman Empire was a religio-political oppressive nation is 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 41. And it reads, 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 41. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and much gold with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves, for slaves, for slaves. Now keep in mind, folks, that the United States of America was built by the descendants of the children of Israel. The Bible predicted that the children of Israel would be scattered into all nations, and we're going to look at that at Luke chapter 21, verse 20 through 24, okay? In the same instance, the Greco-Roman Empire did the same thing in the past. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 41. Let's look at another proof. First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 18. The book of First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 18 and to entreat them that they would take the yoke from them, for they saw that the kingdom of the Grecians did oppress Israel with servitude, with servitude. I would recommend that you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 of the blessings and the curses that happened to the children of Israel to prove that the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the lost tribes of Israel. I would also recommend reading 1 Maccabees chapter 8 and the entire of the Maccabees because it will give you clues to indicate how America is the same as ancient Rome. Luke chapter 
21, verse 20 through 24. Because Jesus the Christ also said that the children of Israel would go into slavery. So let's, let's read that. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. What is this referring to? This is referring to when the Romans came and destroyed the ancient temple in 70 AD. When this happened, the children of Israel had to flee into Africa and other parts further south and west. And some of them went east into Arabia. And some of them went into Asia Minor. It says, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. What is this referring to? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through 68. The blessings of the curses that Moses told our ancestors that if we were disobedient to his laws, that we would go into slavery and be spread throughout the earth. Verse 24. And they, referring to the Israelites, shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What is this referring to? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So the children of Israel would be scattered into all nations, including the United States of America. So now let's look at the similarities between the United States of America and ancient Rome. 1 Maccabees chapter 8, verse 12 through 14. But with their friends, referring to ancient Rome, how ancient Rome conducted themselves. I'll start at verse 1 so we get the context, and then we'll jump down to uh, verse 12 through 14. And it reads, verse 1, Now Judas had heard the fame of the Romans, of the Romans. So now what we're going to do right now is look at the comparison between ancient Rome as well as the United States of America. So now America sets up allies and also displace governments, which we're going to get into in a book that we have called The Land of Hypocrisy. Watch this, verse 12. But with their friends, meaning their allies, and such as relied upon them, they kept amity, and they had conquered kingdoms both far and nigh. Remember the video clip that we just watched, how the United States of America sets up bases all over the world, sets up allies, and also sets up and displaces governments that do not follow after them spreading democracy. This is why this is titled the land of hypocrisy. Verse 13. Also, those whom they also those whom they would help to a kingdom, these reigned, and to whom again they would they displace. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. So the United States of America sets up and displaces different dictators, different government officials that are in favor to the West. 
So whenever they're talking about spreading democracy, they're literally spreading their empire, military bases in Africa, military bases in Asia, military bases in the Middle East, military bases in uh, Europe. This is why you have NATO, which is the North Atlantic uh, Treaty Organization after World War II, where the United States decided to set up allies throughout the world. This is the same thing that is a tactic of ancient Rome. This is not the land of freedom. This is an empire. Verse 14, yet for all, yet for all this, none of them wore a crown or was clothed in purple or to, to be manifest thereby. Let me read that again. Yet for all this, none of them were a crown or was clothed in purple to be magnified thereby. So the United States of America does not set up a king over it, but they have a man presiding over it, which is verse 15, and also a Senate. America has a Senate just like ancient Rome. First Maccabees chapter eight, verse 15. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a Senate house, wherein 320 men sat in council daily, consulting always for the people to the end that they might be well ordered. This is the same thing as America. America has a Senate house as well as a house of representatives and that they committed their government to one man every year who ruled over all their country. So this is the same thing how the United States of America has one president presiding over it, and this president reigns for four years. Nothing new under the sun. This is the land of hypocrisy. So is America just like ancient Rome? You better believe it. As you can see, America has a Capitol building, which is set in Roman architecture, just like the Vatican building is set up in Roman architecture. America has stadiums, just like in ancient Rome, having coliseums where the same people now, instead of battling and fighting to the death, are now doing what? They are fighting for themselves through sporting events through boxing matches, through MMA, through all these different tactics. So America itself is an exact replica of ancient Rome. America has had more wars against indigenous peoples of the earth than any other country on the planet. And we're going to go to the land of hypocrisy, pages two through nine, and discuss this chart of all the global impacts in the millions. When Benjamin Franklin exited the Constitutional Convention, he was asked by a woman, sir, what have you given us? His immediate response was, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Yet most Americans today have been persuaded that our nation's governmental system is a democracy and not a republic. The difference between these two is essential in understanding Americanism and the American system. Before we discuss political systems, however, it's helpful to address the confusion that has been spread about the political spectrum. Many have been led to believe that the political spectrum places groups such as communists on the far left, fascists or dictators on the far right, and political moderates or centrists in the middle. However, a more accurate political spectrum will show government having zero power on the far right to having 100% power on the far left. At the extreme right, there is no government. The extreme left features total government under such labels as communism, socialism, Nazism, fascism, princes, potentates, dictators, kings, any form of total government. Those who claim that Nazis and fascists are right wing never define their terms. This amounts to spreading confusion. Toward the middle of the political spectrum can be found the type of government limited to its proper role of protecting the rights of the people. That's where the Constitution of the United States is. Though so let me pause right there. So now, when we think of protecting the rights of the people, understand, when the United States of America was established, it did not provide life, liberty, and freedom for all people. It only applied to 
Caucasians. That's what they refer to when it says protecting the rights of the people. When you look at the Native Americans, they had minimal rights given to them. Their land was stolen. They were killed by the millions. When you look at the so-called Africans or African Americans, these children of Israel had no rights given to them whatsoever. Think about it. It wasn't until the 1960s where African Americans and other people of color had the rights given to them. So that's only a few short years. Many of your parents and grandparents are still alive that experienced the civil rights movement. That wasn't that long ago. We're in 2022 at the time of this recording, and this happened in the 1960s where they were able to get quote unquote civil rights. But even with that said, they are still suffering from oppression. They're still suffering from mass incarceration. They're still suffering from oppression similar to that of communism, socialism, Nazism, fascism, racism, and total government oppression. Those who advocate such a form of government are really constitutional moderates. So let's analyze the basic forms of government. They are monarchy or dictatorship ruled by one, oligarchy ruled by a few, democracy ruled by a majority, republic ruled by law, and anarchy which is ruled by no one. In discussing these five, we'll see that they can be narrowed down to even fewer. Looking first at monarchy or dictatorship, this form of government doesn't really exist in the practical sense. It's always a group that puts one of its members up front. A king has his council of nobles or earls, and every dictator has his bureaucrats or commissars, the men behind the scenes. This isn't ruled by one, even though one person may be the visible leader. It's ruled by a group. So let's eliminate monarchy dictatorship because it never truly exists. Oligarchy, which is ruled by a group, is the most common form of government in all history. And it is the most common form of government today. Most of the nations of the world are ruled by a powerful few, and therefore oligarchy remains. At the other end, we find anarchy, which means without government. Some people have looked over history and found that many of its worst crimes were committed by governments. So they decided that having no government might be a good idea. But this is a mistake. Because as the ancient Greeks stated, without law, there can be no freedom. Our founding fathers agreed and held that some amount of government is a necessary force in any civilized orderly society. In a state of anarchy, however, everyone has to guard life, liberty and property and the lives of family members. Everyone must be armed and movement is severely restricted because one's property has to be protected at all times. Civilized people have always hired someone to do the guarding, a sheriff, a police force, or some branch of government. Once law enforcement was in place, the people were freer. They I want to pause right there and read a scripture that talks about how America conducts itself and how America is the land of hypocrisy. In Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright, our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. Jumping down, we find that it says this, verse 7, Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments, and let no flower of the spring pass by us. When you think about the um, ancient Romans, they had crowns upon themselves that had springs of flowers around their crown, right? Verse eight, let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. So now notice that this video, in this video, we're seeing that the United States of America uses law and order to give freedom to its citizens, but to the poor and righteous, they give oppression. Watch this, verse 10. This is the thought process of the ungodly. It says this, let us oppress the poor righteous man.
Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. During slavery, and even up until this day, they have oppressed the poor of the land. Think about during the civil rights movement. They didn't care if you were young or old. Think about the hundred years of lynching that transpired. They didn't care if you were young or old. Think about the mass incarcerations that happened to our young black men and our old black men. They don't care if you're young or old. Think about the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre where, where hundreds of homes were burnt to the ground. I did a calculation earlier of one businessman who was a barbershop owner who was making 60, I'm sorry, $600 a month. $600 to $800 a month in 1920 money. When I calculated how much that was, that equates to about $8,000 a month. That's how wealthy Black people were in the 1920s. But when the Caucasians came into the place, they oppressed them and caused them to lose their property and their life by bombing, by creating acts of domestic terrorism against innocent people. Watch this. Let us oppress the poor righteous man and let us not spare the widow. This is what they did. Now, here's how you know this is referring to a government system. Verse 11, it says, let our strength be the law of justice. Let our strength be the law of of justice for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth so in the mindset of america they think that oppressing the poor through law is the way to go and what do they call black folks and native americans and latinos during the time of the eugenics movement they called them feeble minded okay let's continue on they could leave their property, work in the fields, and so on. In short, the proper amount of government makes everyone freer. There are some who advocate anarchy, however, not because they want no government, but because they don't like what they have. They use anarchy as a tool for revolutionary change. The condition of anarchy is very much like a vacuum where something rushes in to fill it. These calculating anarchists work to break down the existing government with rioting, killing, looting, and terrorism. Tragically, the people living in such chaos often go to those best able to put an end to it and beg them to take over and restore order. And who is best able to put an end to the chaos? The very people who started it. The anarchists who created the problem then create a government run by them, an oligarchy, where they have total power. This is exactly what happened in Russia that led to Lenin taking total power and in Germany, where Hitler's brown shirts created the chaos that brought him to power. But anarchy isn't a stable form of government. It's a quick transition from something that exists to something desired by the power hungry. It's a temporary condition. And because it isn't permanent, we eliminate it as well. So in the same sense that you have these oppressive dictators, the United States of America back these governments through financial means, through weapons in the military industrial complex and other such cases. Recall in the video that we watched previously that the United States of America has bases all throughout the land, all throughout the land. And we're gonna continue in that video to go over this particular topic. Indeed, a sign of the, the transferring of imperial power from the British empire to the US empire. Meet David Vine. He's a professor of anthropology at American University. He literally wrote the book about military bases abroad. Over the years, he's been researching and compiling a detailed database of all the US bases around the world. His database is so extensive that a few years ago, one of the Pentagon's research groups used his list for reference for their research instead of their own. The fact that, that researchers working for the army needed to rely on my list of foreign bases that I've been putting together since 2015 is, is a really bad sign. It's a bad sign about transparency, but many researchers believe the Pentagon itself, the military itself, they don't know how many bases they have around the world because there's so many damn bases. That brings us to the question at the heart of all this. So what's the purpose of this 
military presence around the globe? This is a great question. In, in short, I, I think empire is part of the answer. And that's why you can't talk about how many bases the United States has without talking about what those bases actually represent, U.S. imperialism. There you go, straight from the horse's mouth, the United States is an imperial power. This is the land of hypocrisy. This is the land of oppression that creates laws, foreign policy, and oppresses the indigenous populations throughout the earth. If you are non-white, you have been impacted by this government system. Now what we're going to do is we're going to read the book called Land of Hypocrisy. This book was written by Kenny Anderson, and he documents this information very thoroughly. Now, mind you, this book is printed about 2003. So the statistical data we have is up until that point. We don't have statistical data from 2003 to 2022 of more oppressive acts that the United States of America has done. But we're going to go ahead and read this book to go over this briefly. Truth often passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Secondly, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted. This process occurs when a new truth is revealed that contradicts current superstition, whether the truth comes out about the earth not being the center of the universe, or the truth comes out about the horrible atrocities committed by the United States government. Yes, violence and oppression exists all over the world. And the United States is not the only country that has done wrong and made mistakes. But there is currently only one country that has conducted destruction with such in strong involvement on a global scale. There is only one imperialistic empire that has been so deeply linked to so many corrupt dictatorships, oppressive regimes, and corporate exploitations. This material will focus on that one country. Many say to people who criticize the government, if you don't like the government, then why don't you leave? First of all, there is no utopia, and concerned citizens will point out problems and strive for improvements wherever they live. Running away from the problems will not solve them. Additionally, if they were to leave the country, the problems inherent to the country, especially militarism and corporate exploitation, would often affect them more if they lived abroad. In fact, the only way one can escape a global superpower with military and economic domination would be to employ a space shuttle. So now think about this, folks. This person is saying, in order to escape the oppression of America, you need divine intervention from space or you need to leave the planet because America has its tentacles everywhere. This is the place that Bi the Bible calls Babylon the Great. This is the place that has tortured, killed, maimed, oppressed, enslaved the entire planet. This is the delusion of freedom that people think with their over-sensationalized nationalistic patriotism that they are so deceived that they don't see the truth. You have to bring documents, facts, books, video to prove the point that this is not the land of freedom. This is the land of hypocrisy. Readers not raised in America probably have a better understanding of these pages. It's easier to recognize wrongdoings when one hasn't been educated 
by the perpetrator. Many Americans will see the cover of this work and be overwhelmed with defensiveness and hostility and would rather burn than acknowledge or read it. Most of these people have never even considered the possibility that the United States might be guilty of some of the most egregious and severe serious wrongdoings. If this work seems to be biased towards oppressed peoples of the world and doesn't defend the position of the government or corrupt corporations, it is because there is no need to publicize the position that is already stated in 99% of the mass media. The purpose of this work is to accurately present to the world from a perspective other than the one that is hammered out by mass media and show viewpoints of those other than the rich and the powerful. Despite the constant bombardment of propaganda, boasting how great America is, like make America great again, Many have seen glimpses of the ugly side and are not buying the American nightmare that's called the fairy tale of the American dream. Some will read these pages with a sense of confirmation. These are the people who already have suspicions about the interests and motives of the rich and powerful. There are also those who will read these pages with great scrutiny. Hopefully, they will eventually apply that same scrutiny to the misinformation and deception being disseminated by the media of their corporate and government sponsors. I'll give an example of this. You have right now a war going on between Russia and Ukraine, right? Between Russia and Ukraine. But they don't tell you while they're demonizing Russia, and I don't support Russia and I don't support the U.S., don't get it twisted, I'm not for either oppressor, they're all oppressive governments. But little do we know that the United States of America in 2017 literally bombed over seven countries in the Middle East and in Africa, but not a peep in mainstream media. Bombed during the presidency of Barack Obama, the black president, right? First black president, America bombed seven countries. Currently right now, within the year, from 2001 to 2022, I'm sorry, from 2021 to 2022, the United States of America has bombed Somalia, Yemen, Libya, and other places throughout Africa. These are facts. Let's jump over to the section entitled America's Greatest Hits. Astonishingly, many Americans seem to be completely unaware of many of the atrocities committed by their own country. Ripping off the blindfold, the following contains a partial list of the death toll that the American militarism and intervention has caused in the world during the recent history, most of these listings are within the past 60 years. Now, keep in mind, folks, this was written in 2003. So we're going to go over now and look at the statistical data provided by this source. In this chart, we're going to discuss the oppression that happened within the last 60 years and the amount of people that was killed into the millions from North America, Asia, the Middle East, Europe and Central and South America, the Caribbean islands is included in North America. So now let's touch on these facts. The list includes interventions conducted both overtly and covertly. It includes the use of force through militaries, armed, trained, and funded and directed by the United States. Some of these atrocities only had a few U.S. officials actively involved, but these puppet armies would never 
have been capable of such destruction without United States financing, supplying of weapons, and assistance as detailed following in sections we show. There are countless mass killings missing from this list that the United States is responsible for, but this list covers the most violent crimes committed by the United States government in recent history. So remember, this is within the last 60 years, the last 60 years. Unfathomable death tolls are listed here, but it is important to not just think in terms of numbers and statistics. We should visualize each of the beautiful lives that were destroyed. Imagine the Blacks, Native Americans, and Latinos that were enslaved, that were oppressed, that were impacted by biological warfare, chemical warfare, sterilization, forced immunization, eugenics programs, AIDS programs, and other things of that nature. We have to look at the beautiful women and children impacted by these things and other populations throughout the earth. For example, imagine stadiums, stadiums filled with Korean children dying from napalm before your eyes. Visualize the mothers in Iraq digging up the corpses of their children. Picture children in Vietnam who were born without legs or arms because of the residual effects and impact of ancient orange, Agent Orange. Envision tens of thousands of Japanese civilians being wiped by wiped out by atomic bombs before they even knew what hit them. Think about the children in Nicaragua crying on the street, seeking their mothers, not knowing that they had been killed by U.S. created Contras. See the atrocities through the eyes of countless loving parents in El Salvador who were forced to watch their infant children beat to death against rocks. Think about what it must have been like to be those victims of their grieving loved ones. Worthy of noting is that almost all of these slaughters have been directed at non-whites. So now, if one will state that this land is a land of freedom, why is it that the majority of these massacres occur to non-whites? The author that wrote this book is a Caucasian male that is specifying how the children of Edom, the Edomites, the Macedonians, the Greco-Roman Empire, the descendants of the Romans, which is the United States of America and Europe, they direct their slaughter to all non-whites, which is the same thing that Rome did in the past, which is the same thing that the Vatican did in the past with the Inquisition, killing the Black Jews, killing the Black Moors, oppressing the people, and enslaving the children of Israel and scattering them throughout the earth. This is the part of history that is not discussed in your schools. This is why many of you have followed after lies in modern religion, politics, science, education, and every uncouth thing such as social media and in the entertainment industry. You have been deceived. Worthy of, I'm going to read this again, worthy of noting is that almost all these slaughters have been directed to non-whites. And the vast majority of the victims of the United States militarism are civilians. These innocent lives are the victims of the relentless drive by the United States corporate and military elite for global economic domination.
These victims have their lives so that a small percentage of Americans can prosper. Now we're going to look at this chart, folks, and prove how this statistical data that we listed on this chart is completely amazing. Now we're going to read this. Watch this. The following is a partial list of atrocities, massacres, murders, and injuries in recent history for which the United States is responsible. Three million Vietnamese murdered over the course of about 30 years of U.S. aggression. Well over 300,000 Japanese were massacred when the United States raided Tokyo and dropped nuclear bombs on the urban civilian areas of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 600,000 civilians were killed in Cambodia by United States bombing between 1969 and 1975. Over 500,000 people were killed in Laos when America subjected civilians to secret bombing from 1964 to 1973, dropping over 2 million tons of bombs on the country. Over one-fourth of the population also became refugees. 100,000 people were murdered in South Korea prior to the Korean War by a brutal repression supported by the United States forces in 1945. This includes between 30,000 and 40,000 killed during the suppression of the peasant revolt in Cheju Island. Up to 4,500,000 Koreans were killed from 1951 to 1953 during America's massive slaughter in the Korean War. 200,000 were murdered when the Philippines were conquered by American forces. This took place just over 100 years ago. 23,000 people were slaughtered in Taiwan by U.S.-backed, trained, equipped, and funded forces of Qing's Nationalist Army during the late 1940s. 700,000 Indonesians, mostly landless peasants, were murdered in 1965 when the United States armed and supported General Suharto. 200,000 were slaughtered in East Timor in 1975 by General Suharto with U.S. support. 750,000 civilians were driven from their homes in East Timor by Indonesians Indonesian forces in 1999, and 10,000 were killed. Over 1,700,000 Iraqis have been killed by U.S. bombings and sanctions, mostly women and children. Over 1 million lives were lost during the Iran-Iraq War in the 1980s, in which the U.S. used direct force and supported Saddam Hussein and Iraq. 35,000 Kurds were killed. 3,500 villages were destroyed. And between 2 million to 3 million became homeless as a direct result of aggression by Turkey with U.S. arming and training in the 1990s. Over 1 million people were killed in Afghanistan civil war from 1979 to 1992, in which the United States strongly supported the Mujahideen, the most violent and sadistic of the forces. This also set the stage for the CIA-backed Taliban to attain power. 45,000 people were killed in South Lebanon since 1982 by Israel, also armed 
and supported by the United States. Thousands have been killed in Palestine, and millions in both Palestine and Lebanon were made refugees by the United States-backed Israeli Edomite Jews. Over 150,000 were killed in Greece when America advised, equipped, and financed violent interventions in the late 1940s and the late 1960s. Over 75,000 civilians were killed and over 1 million refugees were created in El Salvador between 1980 to 1994, when the United States intensely supported the efforts of a brutal regime and its death squads to eliminate a popular uprising. 40,000 civilians were killed by the United States-backed National Guard in Nicaragua over the course of almost 50 years. 30,000 lives were killed by the United States Contras in Nicaragua from 1979 to 1989. 200,000 Guatemalans were slaughtered from 1960 to 1990s by a military apparatus trained, armed, funded, and assisted by America. Over 35,000 Colombian civilians have been killed during the United States-supported Colombian war against left-wing rebels. More than 4,000 innocent civilians were killed in Panama during the United States invasion in 1989. Hundreds of thousands were killed by the United States direct and indirect interventions in Brazil, Chile, Uruguay, Peru, and Argentina from the mid-60s through the 80s. 50,000 Haitians were killed when the United States military destroyed a uprising in 1915. Between 4,000 and 5,000 Haitians were killed in the early 1990s by U.S. established forces. Thousands were killed in the Dominican Republic during the 1960s when the United States and Dominican troops crushed a pro-Bosch rebellion. Over 3,000 were killed and countless others injured by the United States interventions in Cuba. Hundreds were killed or injured when the United States invaded Grenada in 1983. Over 50,000 Somalians were killed between 1978 and 1990 by United States-supported Saeed Baer. Up to 10,000 more Somalians were killed directly by U.S. troops during Americans' quote, humanitarian mission, quote, in 1993. How humanitarian was that, folks? In the U.S. supported Rwandan genocide, an estimated 800,000 people were killed in just 100 days in 1994. 800,000. Over 300,000 were killed and 80,000 were crippled in Angola from a U.S.-supported civil war. Tens of thousands were killed, and up to 200,000 were tortured in Chan by Hassan Habre with U.S. support during the 1980s. Over one million were killed during Mozambique civil war between 1980 to 1992 in which the brutally violent Renamo forces were supported by the United States. 1,500,000 were killed between 1980 and 1988 in Southern Africa by the U.S. armed South Africans. Thousands of people in Pacific Islands, Puerto Rico, Utah, California, Nevada, Washington, New Mexico, and various others have been killed, infected, or harmed 
as a direct result of United States weapons experiments, including especially nuclear weapons and weapons using depleted uranium. If you're wondering, folks, why the cancer rates are skyrocketing all throughout the earth, it is because of this fact. Hundreds of civil rights activists have been beaten, tortured, framed, and killed in the United States by government agencies in recent history. Hundreds of Black Panther supporters and American Indians were framed, beaten, or murdered by the FBI and its cohorts in the late, 16, uh, late 1960s and early 1970s. Over one over 1,200 immigrants and citizens in America, some of Arab descent, were detained after September 11, 2001, without any evidence of lawbreaking or terrorist activity. Thousands have been killed during America's recent war on terror, and this was approximately written around 2003. So you see, folks, the United States of America is not the bastion of freedom as we suspect. If you actually look at the statistical data, we see that the United States of America killed approximately 25 million people within the last 60 years. This does not include, this does not include 200 million impacted by the oppression, enslavement, and killing of the Native Americans. This does not include the 100 million or so African Americans and Israelites that were brought over to the Americas through slavery and oppression. So it, is America Babylon the Great? Is America just like ancient Rome? It is. We just read The Land of Hypocrisy, pages through, two through nine, and looked at this chart and gave statistical data to support these facts. America is a direct representation of the Vatican in ancient Rome. It's a direct representation of the Colosseums. When you look at the certain laws that are written, many of them are written in Latin. If you look at the various deities that are worshiped and the superheroes that you worship today, the Supermans, the Batmans, the Spidermans, they are all based on Greco-Roman deities. Now let's take a look at a prophecy of Obadiah. We took a survey about this information and 80% agree with this information, 97% uh, 7, 7 disagree and 3% say maybe this is true. But a vast majority of people that have looked into this information has said quite emphatically that this information has to be true because it's backed up with history, it's backed up with documentation, it's backed up in the Bible, and we know that the truth will set you free. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a prophecy of Obadiah. Obadiah was one of the prophets of ancient Israel. He was a black man. Obadiah wrote many uh, deep parables as it relates to the United States of America. And what we're going to do is we're going to examine these parables and reveal some of these truths with a video to prove the point that the Bible is a true book. The Bible is a true book. So we're going to take a look at what does the prophet Obadiah and other prophets in the Bible have in regards to statements about the United States of America. We're going to look at what Moses said. We're going to look at what Obadiah said. We're going to look at what the prophet John said in the book of Revelation. And we're going to look at other sources to prove these points. We gave you secular history. Now we're going to look again to uh, biblical history to prove that the United States of America is the land of hypocrisy. Now, one of the symbologies that you know that the, the United States is represented as is the imagery of the eagle. When you look at the back of a mail truck, you see an eagle. When you look at a top of a flag, you see an eagle. On the back of a dollar bill, you see an eagle. In prophecy, America, Rome, and many of the other Edomite powers, such as Spain, such as England, Germany, France, they were all represented by the eagle. This is their symbol.
Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 50 first, 49 and 50. And then we're going to go to Obadiah to prove this point. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee, referring to the blessings and the curses that will happen to the children of Israel. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. Nation of fierce countenance will shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. So this is proven that the United States of America's symbology is in fact the bald eagle. Now let's go to Obadiah and see what Obadiah says. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Edom, Idumea, is the ancient ancestor of the Caucasian races. Well, you, when you look into history, they always talk about the Greeks, right? And the Romans, but they never tell you who were they called prior to the Greco-Roman Empire. Their history has to exist before three, 350 BC, right? They had to exist on the earth. So who were they known as? They were known in the Bible as the Edomites. So our our forefather, the prophet Obadiah, had a vision concerning the Caucasian races. Watch this. It says, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. The her referred here is Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations written of in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. So out of all the nations of the earth, when you look at it, the European nations are the smallest of populations. There are more Black, Latino, Native American, Indian, Chinese peoples of the earth as opposed to the children of Edom. And then it says, thou art greatly despised. So while America prides itself, and they have the delusion that everyone loves them. As a matter of fact, many nations can't stand America and they despise it to the core. Verse three, the pride of thy heart has deceived thee. America is a prideful place. Edom is a prideful nation. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. The clefts of the rocks is where we get the term Caucasus mountains, right? It says, whose habitation is high. What nations of people lived in the caves of the rocks as the Neanderthal, as the troglodyte, as the cave dweller? We know this to be true based on history and genetics that they descend from the Caucasus Mountains, Mount Sierra, and other mountainous areas such as Mount, Mount Petra. And how do they set up their habitation high? They set up skyscrapers and huge towers of buildings throughout the earth through their Greco-Roman architecture. The pride of their heart says this, who shall bring me down to the ground? So now this is the proof that we're talking about the Greco-Roman empire and the United States of America, verse four. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What's the symbol of America? The eagle. Then it says, though thou set thy nest among the stars. In 1969 was when the United States had space travel. The United States also collaborated with its allies to set up an international space station. During the presidency of former President Trump, they established a new governmental military force entitled the Space Force and the Space Command. They also have secret lunar bases and they have plans for travel to Mars. So the Bible proves that they have set their nests or bases among the stars. The United States of America is also called Babylon the Great in Revelation chapter 17. 
We're going to read briefly Revelation 17 to prove this point. Revelation chapter 17 is going to look at this point. Verse 1, and there came and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, come, uh, come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth among many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The wine of America's fornication is their lies, their media, their propaganda. The way they have deceived the earth is through miracles, through pharmaceutical sorcery, through manipulation and propaganda, through media, through social media and other means. This is how they have control and domination over the minds of the masses. Then it says this. So he carried away, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet covered beast full of names and blasphemies, having in her head seven heads, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Isn't this similar to the Statue of Liberty, which has a golden cup in her hand? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So now we're going to go to Revelation chapter 18, verse 11 through 13, and it reads... This is how you know that it's talking about the America, because it says that America is the nation to whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication with. The United Nations is headquartered in the United States of America. When it comes to religion, the World Council of Churches, which combines all modern forms of idolatry in Christianity, is headquartered in the United States of America. When it comes to the economic system with all the merchants of the earth, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, International Monetary Fund is the United States and the enslaved, the children of Israel, just like the Greco-Roman Empire. Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her, their merchandise any more. When you look at the stock exchange, they have all the trades of goods and services. When you look at the vast amounts of ports throughout the global governments of the world, you have that the United States has ports and trade all throughout the planet. It says this, verse 12, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thigh and wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and of iron and of marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and slaves and souls of men. Now, the United States of America was impactful in how they created the transatlantic slave trade, and the whole entire global structure of global trade could not have been established without the trading of the children of Israel as slaves throughout the earth, just like the prophecies we read earlier in the book of Luke and in Deuteronomy 28, how we would be scattered into all nations. The Bible is a true book. Now, this is something important to see. The bottom of verse 23 in this uh, chapter says this, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets, that's the children of Israel, and of saints, that's also the children of Israel, and of all that were slain upon the earth. 
So this goes to show you, ladies and gentlemen, based on the statistics that we've shown, based on the based on the book, Land of Hypocrisy, that all that were slain on the earth, 80% of you say that, yes, this did occur, and it is from direct involvement of the United States of America. In conclusion, we talked about how the land of hypocrisy is symbolized by the eagle. That is a direct reflection of the Greco-Roman Empire. We talked about how they have a nest among the stars. We talked about how they have an economic domination over the entire planet. We talked about how they set up an international space station as well as space travel. We talked about how they enslave the children of Israel. And we talked about how their militarization has happened throughout the earth. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you watching this information. I know it's a lot of information, but please do share this subject and please do leave your comments in the comment section. The Forefront Radio can be found through many platforms. We appreciate you getting this information and insight. And always remember that the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What can you do with this information? In the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. Just in the same sense that ancient Egypt received plagues for the wickedness that they did, the United States of America is going to suffer famine, plague, pestilence, and war. If you haven't seen the recent pestilences that have happened on a global level, they're going to come more frequently. If you haven't seen the various types of natural disasters, fires, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, blood in the waters that have transpired here in the United States and throughout the world, these plagues will occur more frequently. If you haven't seen the signs in the heavens, such as comets coming down to the earth, such as, such as solar eclipses, such as lunar eclipses, all these can be found in the book of Matthew chapter 24, in the book of Joel, and other prophecies of the Bible. The day of the Lord is near. For those of you that are listening to this uh, podcast, turn from your wicked ways, repent, Follow after Revelation chapter uh, 14, verse 12, which says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. You have the same faith to overcome your sins and follow the law, statutes, and commandments just like Jesus did in his life on the earth. Thank you for listening. Peace and blessings to you all. Hey, my friend, you have just listened to The Forefront Radio. Please leave your comment and input about the show, what you like about the show, as well as any general feedback on ways to improve. We need your help to acquire new equipment to implement studio quality video and audio to our friends. Contribute as little as $4.99. It's only worth a cup of coffee. Then we can produce documentaries, more episodes, and great info for the diaspora. Go to Cash App and enter A-P-H-I-E-L-L-E-V-I to donate to the Forefront Radio to cover our advertising costs and reach more people. Catch our next episode on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, anchor.fm slash the forefront. Always remember, the truth shall liberate the mind. Peace to the heirs of promise and the heritage of the scattered 12 tribes.